Hey everybody, it's Dr. Megan here and it is seven o'clock for the digestive health webinar. And I just wanted to say welcome to everybody that's on so far. And I just want to give another minute to get people on the webinar. So just hang tight, get prepared, and I'll see you in about a minute. Okay, everybody, I am back on, and I want to welcome you to your cha the Change Your Gut, Change Your Life webinar. I am Dr. Megan Burt, and I am your host, and I run um, MeganBurt.com. So if you guys could, I would love to get a little feedback from you first and foremost. So if you can type something in the chat box just to say, hi, you're here, you're listening, that would be wonderful and amazing. So I would love to see that. And I want to get a little interaction here if we can. So this webinar is all about digestion. And the reason that I named it Change Your Gut, Change Your Life is when you change your gut and when you change your health, I believe that you can change your life. It has a dramatic impact on your overall life, the life that you live, the quality of life that you live. And so the healthier that we are, the more purposeful and the more productive that we can be, and that is life-changing. So I want to, in this webinar, inspire health in all of you. And I specifically work with women, and just to teach women that health matters. And I believe that starts in the gut, and it starts with digestion. Hi, Jenny, hi, Deanna, I see that you typed in. Thank you so much. I am glad that you can hear, and um, perfect. Well, let's begin. So. I have this slide here because before we begin, I just want you guys to be ready and prepared for this webinar. And so I say this on a lot of my webinars, but I want you to go and take some notes because you probably are gonna hear something that you haven't heard before. And within the health world, and just this is knowledge in general, the more that you can write down and process, the more that you're gonna remember. So take notes and also minimize distractions. And the reason I say that is you are spending your time on this webinar tonight, and I thank you so much for that. But do yourself a favor and really focus on listening and, you know, close the other browsers that you have up, social media, just silence your phone and really take this time to learn and invest in your health. Also, there is that sidebar that people have said hello in, and I want you guys to use that for questions. If you have any questions, please type them in there throughout, and I will get to them at the end. So this is me. I am Dr. Megan Burt. I am a chiropractor. And like I said before, I run the website meganburt.com. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that it used to be just enjoy food. And I, I realize now, this is July, just enjoy food would have turned Four. So I have been in the blogging world for four years now, but it wasn't until earlier this year in April that I launched doing this full time and I launched MeganBurt.com. So it still has all the same resources that 
you know, Just Enjoy Food had, the things that you love, the recipes, the articles that I write, and um, everything is still on there, but it's also my brand, and it's also expanded a lot because now this is what I do with my time. And really, I am passionate, like I said, about inspiring health in women and coaching women because there's so much information out there and doing one-on-one -on -one coaching on how to get healthy. And really, my main focus is on digestion and everything around digestion. And that's why I wanted to do this specific webinar on digestion because it's such my passion. And it's my passion because it comes from my story too. And I will get into my story a little bit more, but the things that go into to digestion and so it's not we don't just focus on the gut we focus on nutrition and we focus on detoxification and we focus on supplementation and different things that are customized to your body that you need to really get healthy and to change your health and ultimately change your life so here's a little bit more about me and my story the basis of my story is focuses on digestion so when I was 18 this is now hindsight I put this together years later I went on a mission trip to Mexico and I didn't realize at the time that you can contract you know yeast and bacteria and parasites um, from different foods and different water and stuff and so as careful as we were um, I contracted a parasite and so I remember coming home from that that trip and I was like what is wrong with me I just don't feel so good I distinctly remember this feeling in my gut that just was poofy and and you know and I now know it as bloating but I had never felt it to that extreme and it was in the summer and I remember just not knowing what to do and so I filled up this huge glass of water and drank the water as you know quickly as I could like it'll go away then. Well, I did not realize that that was the start. That was the perfect storm. You know, I was 18. I graduated from high school. We moved houses. Um, I had gotten my 18 year old vaccines. I went on this trip. There was so much that happened within like a two month period that my body could not handle it. And that parasite was just the last drop in the bucket to make me sick. And the thing that's 18, you just, I didn't know that I didn't feel well. And so this went on and on and on. I was sick for about 10 years and it escalated into affecting other areas of my body. And it got really bad in chiropractic school when, you know, I'm under stress. I was taking tons of credits and working to become a doctor. And about three fourths of the way done with chiropractic school, I hit a wall. And I got to the point where I could barely get out of bed and I was skipping class and I was skipping classes I wanted to go to because I was so tired. I had extreme brain fog. I had sugar cravings that were ridiculous. It was crazy how much I thought about sugar, wanted sugar. My appetite was insatiable. I would eat breakfast and want more food. The only time I wouldn't want food is when I was so full I could barely breathe. I, I had no hunger and full signals. Um, that's how unhealthy my digestive system was and how much it was affecting my brain and affecting my hormones and affecting my cells. And it was at that time, and that had been uh, almost five years. And I just thought I was really weak. I couldn't get out of bed. I just thought I didn't have enough willpower what it was. It never quite clicked. And I don't know why that I wasn't feeling well. And so the last couple trimesters of chiropractic school, I got um, involved in a year long training program to learn a lot more about functional medicine and going digging deeper than just the chiropractic adjustment and working with supplements and nutrition and really specific healing protocols. And I was so excited to learn this because I got into chiropractic because I love nutrition so much. And so I was sitting listening to this doctor speak and it was over two days and I was so tired I could barely keep my eyes open. My gut hurt so bad all I wanted to do was lay on the floor which is was not acceptable and yet I loved the information. I was just eating it up and it was in that moment that I realized that I don't feel well and I'm a lot sicker than I ever thought that I was, and there is definitely something going on with my gut. And it was at that point in 2009 that I said, I have to get healthy. 
And I have to figure this out. And I never knew that my journey was going to be what it was. It took time to heal my body. It took time to retrain habits that I had, you know, gotten into because I had all these crazy sugar cravings, and so I'd try to eat healthy, and then I would totally fail because I couldn't say no to sugar for more than a day, and it was just not this great cycle. And so over the course of the next five years, I have completely transformed my health and gotten so much more education and training. So not only do I have the training that comes behind the digestive system and cellular health, but I have walked this story and I never could be doing what I'm doing without having walked it myself. And so the picture that you are seeing, the two pictures, the one on the left is me in 2008 and it may not look like to you that these two pictures are that drastically different, but I was so inflamed. I felt so uncomfortable, so gross. My hair was not nearly as healthy. Um, my skin was not as healthy. You could tell that I have a lot of poof to my body, a lot of inflammation going on. And I mean, I remember taking that picture and being like, I feel so gross. Um, it was just an inside out, did not feel well. And then fast forward to the picture on the right, and that was taken last fall, and where my health has completely transformed, I now, I say I'm functional. When I was in chiropractic school, I was so worried. I didn't think I could ever work full time, and, and thankfully at the beginning I didn't have to, but I now have a capacity to be able to work and be able to live my life and truly live my life more productively, more purposefully, and it's really amazing. So I always start with my story because I want you to know where I've been, and I want you to know, too, if you're stuck and you feel like you're the picture on the left, that you, too, can have a transformed body, and you can be that picture on the right, too. So I want you to know that there is hope for you. If my body can heal, your bodies can heal. So I want to talk about the agenda a little bit. So we're going to get to your why. Why do you want to get healthy? We're going to talk about the digestive system, where our digestion is in our country, and really what makes up our digestive system. I want to talk about how the digestive system heals, but also how it gets damaged. We're going to talk some specifics on gut healing because I want to give you some takeaways today. And then I want you to know how you can get a healthy gut and ultimately a healthy body. So let's talk about why. And you can take some notes on this because I really want you to think about this. So why are you on this call? Why did the topic of digestion, why was that, you know, spark an interest? You know, do you have digestive problems? Do you feel like you're just not living up to your potential? You know, why? Kind of get into that. Why do I want to do that? And write down some health goals too. What do you want to achieve in your why? Why are you doing this? And so the best example that I can give is a lot of people will go, you know, my why is I want to lose 10 pounds. Well, that is not a bad why, but that why is very short-term or short-lived. Once you reach that, it doesn't mean that you've transformed your lifestyle habits or it doesn't mean that your, your body feels that much different. It just means that you were able to achieve that. A deeper why and one that is going to keep you inspired and keep you going, and that's why I want to get to the why because it's going to keep you going as you make these changes. The, a why that's going to keep you going is that you want to play with your grandkids someday. You know, you want to be healthy and active and vibrant in your retirement years and not feel sick and horrible at that time. Something that's going to last. For me, one of my whys was I wanted to be able to work full time. I wanted to be able to get up in the morning so that I could have a productive day and do what I felt God called me to do. And it was really frustrating for me to realize that I wasn't living up to my potential, that feeling really horrible for the first part of my day until my brain felt better and I could think and work, that wasn't helping anybody. And so those were some of my whys at that time. And those were at times shorter term, but it took a long time for those to come to fruition. So now that my mornings are much better, and now that I'm able to feel like I can think well, 
it, it's such a blessing every morning that I get up and I'm like, oh, I have energy. So I want you to write down your why. Now we're going to move on. Let's get real. And I always have a slide that says, let's get real, because we got to get to the state of digestion in our country. And I want you to know, not just because I said it, that digestive system problems and abnormal symptoms are on the rise and most people have them, but I want you to know some facts too. So they say that one in four people in the United States have been diagnosed with IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. So 25% of people are medically diagnosed, we'll say, with an irritable bowel with some symptom. Now, an irritable bowel syndrome, in my opinion, just means, I mean, your bowels are irritable. There's something else going on. It's just a label that they put on you. There's nothing that they can do from that. But it does say that medically, at least 25% of people have digestive symptoms and they're great enough to even, you know, get one of their stamps on it. It is said more in the natural health world, in the functional nutrition and functional medicine world, that about 90% of people have a leaky gut. And we're going to get to what a leaky gut is. But really, 90% of people have digestive symptoms. So that means that 90% of you on this call, I'm talking directly to you. And that was me. And we'll also get into what those symptoms are. But understanding that it doesn't always mean that your gut feels bad. And then the next one, when your digestive system is symptomatic, that means your brain is also symptomatic. And we'll get into all those neurological connections, but your, your digestive system is your second brain. There is a ton of neurological connections that are made from your gut to your brain. And so a gut on fire is a brain on fire. And so if you're having brain symptoms and you're having memory issues or you are having brain fog or a lot of fatigue, that is coming directly from your digestive system. So let's talk about what makes up the digestive system. So before we get into all these specifics of how to heal, I just want you to know some more basic science. What is it? So our digestive system starts when food you know, that goes into our body when we're eating. Um, and so when food goes into our body and it ends when food goes out of the body. So you can tell that there is a lot of stuff and a lot of organ systems and a lot of passageways that make up the digestive system. So there's a lot of issues that can arise from all of these parts. Really what we're focusing on today is going to be the small and large intestine, but also the whole digestive system as a whole because they does work together. So once you eat food, saliva contains an enzyme called amylase, and that, along with you chewing, starts to break down our food. That goes into our esophagus and starts peristalsis, and so that's when the food moves you know, throughout the rest of your digestive system, and that's involuntary. So you're not telling your, your food to go, okay, go from the stomach now. Oh, my timer went off. Now go into your small intestine. Um, so it goes in the stomach where gastric juices continue digestion. So there you've got to make sure that you've got enough enzymes in your mouth, that your mouth is healthy enough, that you have um, a healthy microbiome, which will be our next slide, but m microbiome in your mouth, then getting into your stomach, you have to have enough gastric juices. You have to have enough stomach acid to break down your food. Then it produces chyme, which enters the small intestine and continues digestion. Then food continues through the small intestine, into the large intestine, and then out of you. So transit time, and this is very important, transit time, the time that food enters to the time that food exits needs to be 12 to 24 hours. Anything longer than that is would classify as being constipated. Now, most people think that means that they're not going to the bathroom. It does not necessarily mean that. It means that you're not, the time that it takes is slow. So you can do transit time tests with eating a bunch of beets, or taking a bunch of activated charcoal, like 10 capsules, 15 capsules, uh, and see, you know, measure the time that you took it 
to the time that you see whether it's beets or you see black charcoal coming through and to see your transit time. And if it is slower than 12 to 24 hours, and 24 hours is on the pretty slow time, then realize that your digestive system is not working. And that's a really easy kind of at home test that you can do to know that there is something that is not getting your body moving things through. And then that's going to cause your body to be more toxic because it's not getting waste products out the way that it needs to. So I did mention this word, the microbiome, and this is so incredibly important. Now, it's literally become one of my favorite words in health, and it's because I specialize in the gut and digestive system. Yes, but it's also because it is so critical to the overall health of our body. So I first learned about the microbiome about three years ago. I was sitting in a seminar in Utah, and my mind was just blown because we talk about the digestive system and the health, but what, you know, what's the basis? What's the core of that? Like, how do we know where to start? And so I knew at that time that my own health could be transformed and, and, and really I could change my health even more because I had gotten a lot healthier at that point, but I could also help all my clients with this. So I want you to know the microbiome and I want it to be a word that's not big and it's not like too sciencey for you. It's like a household word. So if you're thinking, this sounds a little sciencey, Dr. Megan, just roll with me. It's really cool stuff. So going into the microbiome, what is the microbiome? So the microbiome is our body's microbial makeup. So the ecology of our body. It's the unique makeup of good and bad bacteria that make up our entire body, including our digestive system. So if you look at this picture here, you can tell that our skin has a microbiome. It has certain microbes in it. So our world is really governed by our microbes. So don't go, oh, that's gross. Like it's germy. I need to wipe them all off. No, you want a good microbiome also in your mouth. You don't want to destroy that. The more like sterile and sanitary that we get our bodies, you know, by killing 99.9% .9 of germs, actually the more unhealthy our bodies become because then we're killing off a lot of these good guys and the bad guys, they can rise up and they can take over and problems can happen. And just think of all of our toothpaste and our mouthwashes and our body washes and everything we're putting on our skin that are antibacterial, they're antimicrobial. And then think of then percentage of people that have digestive problems, there is definitely a correlation to that. So we need to have this healthy balance of good and bad bacteria. So I had to preface it with this is not, you know, oh, gross, there's, there's microbes. There are microbes everywhere. So literally when you shake somebody's hand, you are exchanging microbiome of the skin. And that is a good thing because you are able to strengthen your body that way. I really want to focus on today the digestive system and really the stomach and small and large intestine, the, that microbiome. So it's so important because as humans, we have 10 trillion cells. And I do talk a lot in my other webinars about cellular health. So the number of cells alone just completely blows my mind. But microbes, we have 100 trillion microbes. That is 10 times the amount of microbes in our body to cells. So although our cellular health is so important, I would also like to throw out there that our digestive health, our digestive, our microbiome, it may even be more important. So if we combine this work of cell health and microbiome health, we're really going to touch and be able to transform our overall health. So what does this healthy microbiome do? So it increases our satiety. It's able to signal to your brain that you're full or that you're hungry. It keeps a healthy functioning digestive system. It increases muscle mass and it decreases fat storage. So there are a lot of studies out there and you can google these you could type in microbiome and weight loss or microbiome and weight gain and they have done studies where they literally give the microbiome of an unhealthy obese mouse they tran they give it to a fit skinny mouse and that skinny mouse 
starts to gain weight and become obese. They can do the exact opposite. They can take the microbiome of a healthy mouse who has good body composition, good muscle mass, doesn't have an overabundance of fat, give that to the overweight and obese mouse, and they start to lose weight. So a lot of weight loss issues are digestive system related. It's not always, oh, well, you're just not working out enough. It's not like, oh, well, you're just a glutton and you're a sloth. You know, we're just too lazy to get a good body comp. That is such a lie. And I wish we could, everybody could stop teaching that. Our microbiome, when it becomes healthier, we start to lose weight. And if you remember my story and looking at those two pictures, I could not lose a pound if I tried. I mean, I would try to exercise more. I would try to eat less. I would try to eat this different thing. Nothing would change my weight. And now I didn't have very much weight to lose at my unhealthiest, but I knew I needed to lose about 10 or 15 pounds. Well, I got my gut healthy and the weight came off. I didn't even try to do it. It just was natural because of the health of my gut. Mine was so unhealthy that you can tell that I had a lot of these symptoms myself. A healthy microbiome, those microbes, when they're, when they're good, they talk directly to the DNA of your cells. The unhealthy ones do too. So you can literally affect DNA expression, which is called epigenetics. You can turn diseases on and turn diseases off with the health of your microbiome. It promotes thyroid health. So a healthy gut is a healthy thyroid. It promotes liver detoxification. It decreases inflammation in the body and it promotes healthy skin. So this is important stuff. So I, like I said, love everything about the microbiome. So this is kind of a funny thing, but the Human Microbiome Project it says that the human body has 100 trillion microscopic life forms living in it. And that little guy goes, you call this living? I mean, just think of the, the mass amounts that, that are from, you, you know, your microbiome. They say our microbiome weighs about three pounds. So that is a lot of microbes. So what you want and what we want here is not all good guys, but we don't want too many bad guys. We want this really good balance that comes with it. And so just think of it like you've got these good guys that are signaling all these, you know, great things to your body, your organs are working well. Well, you can have some bad guys because you want to keep your good army strong. You don't want them to become, you know, lazy, if you will, and go, I have nothing to fight off. I have nothing bad. I'm just going to, you know, take a vacation. You know, you want that army, so to speak, of good guys to be able to still have some threats that come in and know how to neutralize them. So let's say you're eating out and you just happen to get something that had some bacteria in it or some yeast in it, some bad microbes, maybe even a parasite. Well, your digestive system is so healthy because you have all this, you know, this healthy balance of your microbiome and instantly that becomes neutralized and it doesn't become a problem and we don't promote a damaging your gut. You're able to keep healing throughout there. So this quote is blows my mind. Over 95 million Americans experience some kind of digestive problems and the total health care costs from those are $40 billion annually. So you are able to save yourself money by investing that money in a healthier lifestyle because you know about the microbiome. So we're going to get into how you can support your microbiome too. Um, but I'm so glad that you now know about it and that you're armed and ready for it. So do you feel good? And I want you to think about this. So we've gone through the digestive system and you may be thinking, hey, like, I, my tummy feels pretty good. I don't really have digestive symptoms. You also may be thinking, oh, they're pretty mild. I, I don't know if they're really that big of a deal. Or you could be the other person on the line going, um, everything that you said is me times 10. So having a healthy microbiome working on the digestive system, it's for everybody, whether you feel it or not. And so the reason I put this on there, do you feel good? Is because there are other symptoms of an unhealthy digestive system other than just feeling it in your gut. Some people have what I call like the, the gut of steel where they can have something going on and their body is not doing well, but they don't feel it in their gut. 
So I want you to um, listen to this list of unhealthy digestive symptoms. Extreme hunger, cravings for sugar or grains, feeling bloated after a meal, getting gas or getting stomach cramps after a meal, having food allergies or sensitivities. They can be diagnosed or else you could go, you know, every time I eat this food, you know, insert the food, ooh, I feel really, really bad. That's going to be a food allergy or sensitivity. It's going to say that something is going on at a deeper level within your gut. If you have unstable blood sugar and you can't go more than a couple hours without food, there's something up with your gut. If you have frequent constipation or diarrhea, there's something up with your gut. If you have candida or yeast infections, that means there's something deeper going on in your gut. Weight loss resistance, just like I talked about, that inability to lose weight regardless of how you eat and how you exercise. Fatigue and brain fog. Mood issues like depression or anxiety. Those are directly correlated to the gut because your body produces its serotonin within the digestive system. That's your happy hormone. And so if you are not having a healthy, if you don't have a healthy digestive system, you are not going to have healthy neurotransmitters and healthy hormones, and that's going to affect your brain, and that's going to affect your mood. A decreased immune system. About 70 to 80 percent of our immune system is located within our gut. It's called gut-associated lymphatic tissue. And so if your immune system is low, let's look to the gut. Skin rashes. Most often, skin rashes, acne, um, eczema, psoriasis, they're all a gut issue. It's because your body is not detoxifying properly. It can't get the toxins out. And so what it does is it pushes them through the skin and it pushes them through the areas of the skin that already have an unhealthy microbiome. And so if you wonder why, I don't, why do I get it on my face? Why do I get it on my hands? Why do I get it in the back of my legs? It's because there is literally an unhealthy microbiome there. And that's where your body knows that it can push out those toxins through and then you get that rash. And also, living a high-stress lifestyle not only damages the gut, but an unhealthy gut causes more stress. So they really feed within each other. And so if you go, if you said to any of those, that's me, we need to look a little deeper in your gut. So what is a leaky gut? And I want to go through these um, fairly quickly. I think these are great graphics. And a leaky gut really starts with inflammation of the gut lining. That can come from many different things, and we'll get to that. But this is the cycle that it, that happens. So it's not just, I never want anybody to think, I just get tummy aches every once in a while, or I just get bloated after a meal. It's no big deal. Understand that there's a lot more going on in your gut. Our gut can't feel pain. Like, you know, we break our arm, we're going to feel it. We stub our toe, we're going to feel it. Our gut has to give us different symptoms. And so just because because the symptoms maybe don't seem that severe right now, realize that there's a lot going on in there. So it starts with inflammation of the gut lining. That leads to nutrient malabsorption. So you're not absorbing your nutrients right. That in and of itself can increase your appetite because your body is going, feed me more food so I can get more nutrients. That's going to transition into an immune response. And then that's going to set off this, these GI issues, multiple food intolerances. That's where a lot of these symptoms are going to start coming, feeling bloated, feeling gassy, whatever it might be. And then the last piece, and this is where it becomes real and it becomes quite scary, is autoimmune diseases. So the autoimmune diseases, which are in complete epidemic nowadays, have a very, very deep um, component to the gut. So leaky gut, what causes that GI inflammation? Stress, toxins, food particles or food sensitivities, different drugs, pathogens. Pathogens are bad microbes. And if there's another organ system that's not working like it should because that's being broken down by something else, that can all contribute to this GI inflammation. Then that leads to, so you can see there on this graph on the left side, those gut cells, they're together. 
they should be fairly fused together. There's not much that should be able to get through. They're called tight junctions. Little particles should get through, not big particles. What happens with gut inflammation is they literally break open. And then it sends those food particles and those pathogens in, which then just causes more and more issues. And I'll go here next because this makes this makes more sense. Um, what that does is you don't want those microorganisms. You don't want them to pass through the gut cells. You want them to stay in the gut. You want your body to detoxify, get them out, you know, neutralize it, do what it needs to do in the gut. But instead, it passes through and we get it all these things in our bloodstream. Then our bodies aren't absorbing nutrients. We get inflammation. Things cross over our blood-brain barrier, and we literally get brain symptoms. We get inflammation systemically, and then also that autoimmune response. So something, there is a, um, there's something called zonulin. It literally is released in a very unhealthy gut, and it will break apart those tight junctions. So people that have celiac, which is a um, diagnosed autoimmune you know, response, food allergy to gluten, they have so much zonulin that their tight junctions will break apart. And they'll break apart a lot, and it will cause some very, very extreme GI problems, oftentimes leading to more autoimmunity. And so it is so important for people with celiac to not only follow a gluten-free diet, but to really, really focus on digestive health as a whole, oftentimes follow a grain-free diet, working on supplements so that you can really down-regulate, turn off that zonulin, and be able to keep a healthy gut. So leaky gut, microbiome, imbalance, it really affects the whole body. And, and I have touched on this before, but you can see here, it doesn't just relate to the gut. It really affects the entire body. So just because your gut feels good, if you've got any of these other symptoms, joints, your adrenals are fatigued, your skin is off, your thyroid's off, your brain doesn't feel well, then we need to look to the gut. So how do you support digestive health in the microbiome? So this is where you're going to want to take some notes because I'm going to be going through these things and I don't have slides for them exactly. So we have to start with removing some things, removing some definite digestive system harming foods and substances. So the foods are removing allergenic and sensitive foods. Some people know their specifics. Personally, I don't love food allergy tests because they can be very inaccurate and they can be a picture in time and oftentimes they change a lot. So that doesn't mean that they're a um, hard and fast diagnosis of your food allergies forever. But if you do know the foods that make you feel bad, they are um, important to remove. The Really the basics to remove is remove gluten. Gluten in Latin means glue. So it literally is glue in your intestines. Now, I get this question all the time, and there's a lot of, you know, different gluten-free information out there, and I'm very, very glad that there's this gluten-free movement. But we, I get this question of like, well, why is wheat so bad? Because gluten is found in a few different um, grains, and they spell browse, barley, rye, oats, wheat, and spelt. The main culprit is wheat. I don't, most of us don't eat a lot of spelt or rye or anything like that, but wheat's the main culprit. And so people go, well, we've had wheat forever. Why this sudden rise of celiac and why this sudden rise? I bet gluten sensitivity doesn't exist. I mean, I've heard all those things. And it's a good question to ask. Why do we have all these problems? Because I believe we should completely avoid gluten. And as a society, we sh it just shouldn't be in our bodies. Um, the reason back in, this was in the 70s, there was a guy by the name of Norman Borlaug, and he had this idea to hybridize and crossbreed wheat. Now, this is not genetically modified. That is a completely different thing. Um, wheat has not been genetically modified, but it's been hybridized and crossbred. So traditional wheat, which is called einkorn and emmer, it's a very um, kind of temperamental plant. It's very tall. It doesn't yield a ton. It is very sensitive to drought, so it can die very easily. And it was hard to produce a lot of wheat. 
So Norman Borlaug decided, you know, if I can hybridize this, I can change wheat, then I can feed more people. And really his heart was pure in this. He wanted to feed people. He won a Nobel Prize for creating um, high yield dwarf wheat. It is short wheat. It produces a lot of wheat and it can survive in a lot of droughts. So they, they've sent it all across the world. And he won this Nobel Prize and he's known um, as the guy who, you know, cured or fixed um, world hunger. And so what happened though with this hybridized high yield dwarf wheat is it has a lot more sugar components to it. It is a lot more addictive to our brain and they say it contains about 14 to 20 times more gluten. So it is more glutinous, it's more stretchy um, and it acts really poorly within our body. A lot of studies and research shows that our pancreas has no idea how to break it down. There's digestive enzymes don't even touch it and it becomes a major issue in our gut. And so that's, that's rule number one. That's, you know, my, my tip number one is removing gluten. If you need some digestive healing, then I would definitely recommend taking it a step further. And you can do this in baby steps if you haven't even tried taking gluten out before and removing grains, all grains. That includes rice, that includes oatmeal, that includes quinoa, taking them all out and really giving your digestive system a rest. They, grains can act kind of like sandpaper in the gut and really irritate that gut lining. So if healing is needed, a grain-free diet is what I recommend. I'm not going to go into it too much. I have a webinar already on that. It's on my YouTube page. So you can look up Dr. Megan Burt and it is my grain-free ignite webinar. And I will go through literally over an hour just on this topic. And so that's why I can't cover it right now. So I want to give you a resource to learn more. I also have, um, a resource on my blog, meganbert.com. If you type in going grain free, that will also give you a lot of information on how to go grain free. And it's also something that I do in my coaching program is I walk you directly through it. So if you are overwhelmed, know that I can be of assistance and help there. Another remove is removing sugar. Sugar is an anti-nutrient. It does not do anything good. It feeds those bad microbes. It affects inflammation like crazy. And we have way too much sugar, way, way, way too much sugar in our diets. They say the average person eats 22 teaspoons of sugar a day and adolescents are up to 32 teaspoons. That is purely ridiculous. Our bodies cannot be healthy with that much sugar. And so removing sugar I recommend using stevia. If you need a lot of healing, only use stevia because then you are, are getting rid of anything that is going to raise your blood sugar. And if you don't need quite as deep of a level of healing, I love using some raw honey too. So the majority of my recipes that are on my website are um, grain-free. About 99% of them are grain-free, but also they are sweetened with stevia and raw honey, probably... 75% of them. So you can find some great recipes there. Removing bad fats. That's another one. And there's this new world, which I'm sure you've heard of, of good fats and bad fats. And what are they? What's healthy? What's not? Because we were taught to avoid fat. Fat's bad. Fat makes us fat. Don't eat fat. It's bad for our arteries. That's really not true. There's a whole host of good fats. And then there are some that are bad for us. The bad fats are gonna be hydrogenated oils, canola oil, vegetable oils, peanut oils, soybean oils. And so canola oil is oftentimes touted. That's probably the biggest one that you're gonna see because it's still found in health food stores. Salad dressings, the hot bars that you get, especially at Whole Foods, a lot of their salads have canola oil in them, canola oil and mayo. And it makes me sad because there are so many better options, but that is not a health food at all. Those oils are PUFAs. They're polyunsaturated fatty acids, and they are literally like little inflammation bombs to your body. The good fats that you're going to want to eat, you're going to want to eat coconut oil, butter, um, avocado. You're going to want to get the good fats from your animal proteins, grass-fed beef, free-range chickens, eggs. If your body can handle dairy, doing some raw grass-fed organic dairy products, um, nuts and seeds, avocados, um, those are all good fats. 
and you probably are thinking coconut oil and butter, excuse me, aren't those saturated fats? Did we not, you know, weren't we taught that they're horrible for us? Realize that when you see saturated fat, see saturated with nutrients. One of my good friends taught me that that little line, saturated with nutrients, they are essential to the health of your body and your digestive system needs good fats to heal. And your brain also needs good fats to heal. 60% of our brain is made up of fat, majority of that being saturated fat. So for a healthy gut and a healthy brain, we need good fats. So I already kind of moved on to the good things. Another good thing, this is so critical to overall gut health, is fasting. So I'm going to say this with a little disclaimer on it. I use fasting a lot in my one-on-one -on -one customized health coaching programs. I walk people through what works for their body, how to do it, and we, I hold them accountable to it, walk them through different symptoms that they might experience. So I'm not a huge fan at all, and I don't recommend just going in, you know, I don't recommend water fasting at all, but water, but doing any kind of fasting without having a practitioner find what's best used for your body. And so that's my disclaimer there. But I did still want to touch on fasting because fasting is, I believe, essential for healing the gut. And I know for a fact that my gut would not be as healthy as it is now without using fasting as a healing tool. So it is an amazing healing modality that has been used for centuries. It's nothing new. There's a lot of information out on intermittent fasting, doing it daily essentially by skipping breakfast. And once again, there's so much more to that. But there's other ways to do longer periods of fasting. A research study came out within the last couple of years that said that you can restart your immune system after fasting for three days. And fasting, the amazing thing that it does with digestion is it gives your digestive system a break and it conserves energy so that you can use energy elsewhere. If you think of how we're taught to eat in our society, in our country, we are taught you eat three meals a day and two snacks. So literally you can be eating from 6 a.m. all the way to 10 p.m. And then your body only gets a fasting break because you think, well, sleeping is fasting. So you get a fasting break from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. There is so much energy that it takes to digest food. And this constant influx of food within our guts is not something that our bodies were designed to handle. If you think years and years ago, let's just think you owned your own homestead. And you literally, you had to live off the land. You know, yes, you had some neighbors, but if your crops didn't yield, if you didn't take care of your animals, your family didn't eat. So what did you do? You rose really early. You probably didn't eat anything. You just went right outside, you know, grabbed a glass of water and started doing your chores. Then at lunch, you had a lighter lunch, nothing too big, but you know, you had to take a break, get out of the noonday sun, and then you're back to work until dinner. And dinner, you had this large dinner. Your body, you know, you you said, you know, good day is work. And then you slept well and did the same thing the next day. You would not be eating constantly. You don't eat as much as we do because we don't have to tend to our land and tend it the same way. And, um, you know, eating is something that's all around us. You go somewhere and there's a snack counter and there's a vending machine. And so it's constantly around us. And I just believe that we tend to eat too much and too often. Um, and, and we can definitely support a healthier digestive system by looking at how we eat differently. But in terms of fasting, um, doing longer fasts can be just the, the best thing to heal a digestive system. Moving on to the next thing, this goes with the picture that is up here, is fermentation. So fermented foods, vegetables and beverages are critical for gut health. And so you might go, oh, that's awesome. I like pickles, but I will not touch sauerkraut and oof, everything else sounds gross. So bear with me for a second. One of the key pieces to healing the gut and to keeping it well is through the tra traditional method of fermentation. So this goes way back into ancient history and it's, it was used as a means to preserve our food without refrigeration. So one thing that was found when they were studying cultures that had a, um, that lived a long time 
and they had a they were really healthy is that they had a diet that had high levels of fermented foods. So Europeans, they commonly use cabbage, which made sauerkraut. Asian cultures fermented soy to make miso. They also made kimchi. And then you've probably heard of kombucha, which is fermented tea. And that originated in China. So fermented foods are so healthy for our gut because they contain healthy beneficial bacteria. They contain those good microbes. It is literally probiotics in a jar. Now, I love probiotics as supplements, but moving even the deeper level, what you get in the jars that you ferment is this just plethora and all these different strains of bacteria that you just can't bottle up into a capsule. And so they are really critical for um, for health. And I had some sauerkraut with my um, burger for lunch today. So I try to get that in daily. So fermented foods, they also contain a high level of nutrients. And when you consume them, you actually absorb more nutrients from the foods that you eat. Fermented foods are called pre-digested, which means that they're really easy to break down and assimilate nutrients from. So your body does not have to work as hard to break down the food, which ultimately makes digestion easier. So just imagine how much easier it is to digest sauerkraut versus a big, huge bowl of raw vegetables. <laughs> there is a time when the raw veggies, just the thought of them would give me a stomach ache. And so I love fermented foods and I tell people, um, start low and slow. So start with a tablespoon or two at a time, work your way up. You don't want to just, you know, constantly eat fermented foods all day long. There is a balance. You don't want to get too much good bacteria. And one other little thing that I want to mention, if you go, if you're, you know, thinking right now, well, I've tried sauerkraut and I feel horrible, or I drank some kombucha and I had the worst stomach ache in the world. Not everybody can do fermented foods with the state of their gut and where it's at. That would most likely mean that you have SIBO or small intestine bacterial overgrowth and you do not do well on fermented foods. And that is something that I work with a lot within my health coaching program. So I cannot speak to that specifically, but know that there is a deeper level of healing that does need to happen before we can introduce fermented foods and before your gut can really thrive. On them. So your next question I'm sure is going to be, where do I even get them? So you can purchase them at health food stores. You can also make them. So I have a bunch of recipes on my website. If you look, search fermented foods, they can be a little more expensive to buy. Um, they're much cheaper to make, but if it overwhelms you to make them, you can buy them. They're out there, but not all fermented foods are created equal or not all sauerkraut and pickles, I should say, are are created equally. The sauerkraut we typically think of that comes in a can that is not fermented, that has some sort of vinegary acid thing, you know, that makes sauerkraut. It's more of a chemical reaction. It's not going to contain any beneficial bacteria. Same thing with pickles. If it's not refrigerated, they're not fermented. There's the pickles are still good for you, but they're not going to have the fermentation. So fermented foods have to be in the refrigerator and you will only find the fermented products in the refrigerator. So there's some great ones. I love kimchi. It's spicy and got garlic and ginger and hot peppers in it. It's really, really good. So refrigeration is key when it comes to um, fermentation. And then I already touched on this. Lots of good fats. If you're looking to heal your gut, you got to get at least two tablespoons of coconut oil and butter in a day. So moving on to supplements that support a healthy digestive system. And I want you to know that these are literally the basics of the basics. In my programs, I work with everybody individually, reading lab tests, um, sending out for more labs, finding really a customized supplement approach. But there are some things that work well for most everybody. Glutamine works great. It's an anti-inflammatory for the digestive system and you can get it in a powder, add it to smoothies, add it to drinks, and that can really help decrease inflammation. Digestive enzymes helps that pancreas out. And the same thing for um, some like betaine HCL, which helps add more acid to the stomach. If you're you know, gut needs to help break down your food that can really help to alleviate some symptoms and keep your digestive system working better. And then a probiotic 
once again, this does not work for everybody right away, but I'm a firm believer in not only eating probiotic rich foods like fermented foods um, and cultured dairy. I forgot to talk about that like kefir but also taking a probiotic and finding one that works really well for your body. And then magnesium. Magnesium works for regularity. So if you have a poor transit time or you suffer from constipation, magnesium is going to increase that. And it's something that you want to make sure you keep those bowels moving and get toxins out of your body. So I want to um, ask you this question. What would you do if you got your health back? And this really ties right back into your why. You can do all those things. You can achieve all those things by getting your health back. And so, like I said, and have mentioned, I work one-on-one -on -one with clients. This is Michelle. Um, we Most of the people that I take on have some level of digestive issues going on. And I, once again, work really closely with nutrition. Um, but as you can see, M Michelle, she's got her she's got her life back. She has got her energy back. She, I I could help her talk through her digestive system, figure out what was going on, and then find this customized approach that really helped her, which can be the same thing for you. So I do offer health coaching, and like I've said, it is one on one. And it's not a one size fits all program, not at all. It's customized to your needs and what your body specifically needs. So I will teach you even a deeper level than I was able to go into on this webinar, but also walk you through ways to achieve your own health goals. So how do you get help? So a few things that I specialize in, just like I said, digestive system symptoms, such as bloating, gas, constipation, heartburn, and stomach aches. It also goes into those deeper level of brain issues, mood, hunger, some, and I work with women 99% of the time. And most of the time women have a weight loss goal and you come to me going, I don't know which diet to follow. I don't know what nutrition I'm supposed to eat, what's healthy, what's not healthy. And even when I do it, I just fall off the bandwagon. I can't seem to stick to it. I don't, I, you know, I'm really good for a few days and then I'm really bad for a few days. Um, I am able to help you once you get your digestive system healthy, you can be consistent following a very healthy nutrition plan and not feel deprived and not feel those cravings. And that is what I call freedom from food. You get to make the choice of the foods that you eat, not your body making that choice for you. And then you feel guilty for those choices. If weight loss is one of your goals, I want you to achieve weight loss without starvation, without deprivation. I believe real weight loss is done through feeding your body proper food. Yes, doing exercise, but really getting the body healthy from a cellular and digestive perspective. When you get your body healthy, weight loss becomes a byproduct of that. I want to not only find your food allergies, but teach you how to avoid them. And then you also get a customized approach to nutrition, supplementation, and detoxification that is unique to you your, and your body and your health goals. So today, the thing that I am offering you is a free 20-minute intro phone call. So what that phone call is, and these are the things, um, and I take this very, very seriously when we're on the phone for these 20 minutes, is I want to see, number one, if I can help you. And you can see over on the right side, you can actually click to sign up for a call. So anytime during this time, you can click and you can find my schedule to do so. But with those 20 minutes, like I said, I take it really seriously. I want you to get a lot out of that. I want you to know um, more of how I work as a doctor. I want to know your health goals. I want to um, see if we're going to be a good, fat, a good fit, a good match, that I'm the right doctor for you because my programs are definitely not for everybody. And so this is a way that I can see if we're a good fit, and then you can know even more about that. 
And so this free um, intro consultation call, it's for, it's for any of you. And so feel free to take advantage of that. I have cleared quite a few spots on my schedule in the next couple of weeks so that I can fit all of you in there. And really there is no pressure to this offer. It's just an intro phone call because I just want to make sure that that me as a doctor and you as one of my clients that we're going to have this awesome relationship working together and that you're going to be able to achieve your health goals from that. And if at the end of the phone call you go, I don't really want to work with Dr. Megan, that's totally cool. I hope that you learn something from the call. But if you're like, this sounds like what I need, then I can give you more specifics on that too. So like I said, there is an offer that's on the right side of your bar that goes directly to my schedule and you can click intro phone call and you can get on my schedule for that. And I so look forward to helping you, talking to you on that. So does anybody have any questions? I don't see any questions yet in the sidebar, but if you do, please let me know because I want to make sure that I get all of those answered. And if you guys have more questions or you think of them later, you can contact me. There is a contact me um, spot on my website, meganbert.com. Feel free to do that if you you know weren't able to click that link and you still want to sign up for an intro call you can click on my services on my website and it'll bring you right to there so you can sign up for it there um so i just want to next if nobody has any questions just say thank you i so appreciate you being on this webinar i do these for you i do these so that you can learn and that you also know where you can get some more help. It is my passion and I feel like one of my purposes in life to help people experience, help women experience just a deeper level of health. So once again, you can change your life. You can live more purposeful, more productive, and just a fuller, more vibrant life. So thank you so much for being on here. And there's going to be a replay. You're going to get a link to that. So if you know somebody that needed to listen to this, that um, you want to send it to, you can definitely forward it to them. As many people as we can get to watch this the better because like I had said earlier 90% of us have some type of digestive symptom going on and if it was up to me I'd like to clear all those out because I know how horrible it is to live feeling that way and I just want you to know there's hope and there is freedom within your health so thanks so much and enjoy the rest of your night